Hello and welcome to the new uh, data science tutorial project where I will be showing you the one other data, the end to end project. So we will start with the data import, data verification, cleaning, exploration, standardization of data. Uh, after that machine learning, we will apply a different type of machine learning and I will give you some task here. Also, I will give you some task here for your homework so that you can easily do your uh, you know all the practice along with me and uh, then we will do based on the machine learning we will do some predictions also finally what i will show you some real time prediction that means suppose you are taking this this model and uh, putting into some sort of um, application like a web application or desktop application or anywhere then generally how would you uh, accept uh, the input I will show you an example of that and uh, make a prediction so that you can give the information out. That means you can actually create some real life application if you follow this procedure or if you follow this. The only thing which I won't show you is the uh, development of application because that's something out of this scope. The, the web application, if you want to know how to create some sort of a web application, I have produced two different courses one on the shiny which is related to the r programming if you if you are there in the r programming and another is related to the dash so dash is basically a framework where you can create dashboards and applications for this so you can check out those courses i will probably go ahead and put the link in the description but uh, uh, but mainly what i will show you how would you basically do this type of an end-to-end -end project which basically uh, is needed from anyone who is learning the data science. All right, with that, let's first do a uh, thing is what data we were going to import. So wine quality is basically the data, which is a data uh, that is related to checking the, about the wine quality. So a uh, number has been given to a wine type of a wine that, that is and what is the quality. So think about this. If you are in a company, right, which is a wine making company, right, like for example, in India, in Nasik, you have this Sula wine company. Suppose you work in a Sula wine company and uh, right now company is spending uh, the hundreds of thousand uh, rupees or millions of rupees in terms of uh, wine tasting, right, and checking whether wine quality is good or not. So you have, let's say, hundred people out there who are tasting hundreds or thousands of wine different wines that probably they are making every month right and basically giving the feedback and things like those so you want to automate this entire process and with the help of the algorithm with the help of the uh, machine you may want to optimize this entire process so that you are not waiting up until the uh, wine taster that the wine is finally made or a sample is made and they are testing and doing it but with the help of the machine you you should you want to be accurate enough like 90 percent and more that your wine is actually good or not right so in that case if this is something a project that is coming to us then we can utilize uh, or we can how we can do this is something with what i will show you so similar type of use case you can solve with the help of this basically process all right, so first thing first, we will going to import the data and the data is present here. And as you can see, I'm using the uh, collab, right? Google collab. Uh, that means this will be a live workbook. You can go ahead and access it using the link which I have given in the description. All the data, all the, uh, and along with that, you have the data set link as well. So with that, First thing first, uh, we were going to upload the, uh, where you go, wine quality. This is the data set, wine quality N, and I will click upload. Click OK. So this is something which you will going to uh, have. And if you see on the left hand side over here, the wine quality is present. So we were going to import a couple of standard libraries like pandas numpy matplotlib and uh, seaborn which is data exploration data import data visualization library rest other libraries i will import as and when the need is arising 
so that you will get to know that uh, when to import which library right sometimes when you see an actual program there are like 15 or 20 different libraries that are uh, there and when i started learning back in the day that was also quite daunting it's like where would i use all of these libraries and what is the use exactly exactly where is is it being used so keeping that in mind the struggle which i had um, around five six years back when i started doing this space uh, this is something i want to make it simple for you and i want to give you the exposure to the library only when it is needed right so with that let's first get our favorite pandas import the numpy as np the alias import seaborn as SN sns and matplotlib matplotlib.pyplot as plt so this all of this libraries this will help us do the uh, data import as well as um, some of the data exploration task even some in certain cases visualization as well numpy is basically to convert the data into array when we were going to do some sort of a prediction on the real data then we have the seaborn library like seaborn as sns and uh, which is also a data visualization library and matplotlib is also a visualization library matplotlib is basically the base visualization library on top of that you have the seaborn which have some more advanced features with that we will going to and before that i will also import warnings library so that if any warning is coming let's say if if it is an old feature or feature is about to obsolete so those type of warning if you want to filter that we will we can use with the help of this command warnings dot filter warnings and uh, within bracket we say ignore that way unnecessarily a lot of long warnings will not come but if you are really interested in seeing the warning then you can remove that from here okay so after that first thing first let's create a data frame object where we will going to store the wine quality wine quality and dot csv and we were going to enter that and now no search okay just make sure that wine is properly written there and i hope nothing will be problematic now okay once we are done let's just check the first few rows wine dot head right so it shows the first five rows right here in this case uh all of them are white wine if you want to check the last rows wine dot tail is something you can do where you will see the last couple of rows so it is going all the way up to 6496 so that's something uh we can check that starting from 0 to 6496 that means 6497 rows are present although we can also use this method which is wine dot shape it will also give the same output that you have 6497 rows so starting from 0 to 6496 is actually the 6497 and you have 13 column here starting this from type to all the way till quality so you have 13 columns over there so second now another important thing is checking the null in each column so wine dot is null dot sum sorry i this has to be bracket so here you check you get that uh, fixed acidity column is having the uh, some nulls like 10 values 8 values 3 2 2 so it's like very very you know minimal values which are null and generally on over here also ph has 9 and surface has 4 so two things can be done over here one is either we remove it or we basically um, uh, imputed so in this case since they are like very less we can remove this so we have that wine dot drop let's go no okay drop any and uh, after that i will let's just see whether it drops everything or not six four six three rows 
is it the same thing now what is coming over here no so what we need to make sure is we say in place equals to true so now it is fine and now you will see that 6497 will change 6463 that means all of these rows are removed if we run this code again you will see all of them are 0000, 000, 000, 000. so it is important that you don't have any missing values so that you will uh, not have any issue when you are doing the um, machine learning right another method which i want to show you is something if you want to fit averages over there then what you can do is you can simply run this command wine dot update wine dot fill any right so you are updating the wine object and you are filling the any with what wine dot mean so that way you will going to fill the averages over there so i will just keep it over there since we have done already done this drop the n's but this is where if you want to fill the averages then this is what you are going to use right okay so after that uh, now let's just check that how many um how many uh, red and white wines are present just for the sake of checking all right so we will say wine type and uh, dot value underscore counts so once we do that what you get is we have 4870 and 1593 what if if i want to check the percentage because that is much much easy to interpret well in that case in value count you come oh, okay but here but here normalize equals to true so 75 percent of the values is what you have for white wine for red wine you have this similarly what you do is you check the quality variable okay that's an exercise for you all right and uh, if you want to uh, visualize this information also so you can you can plot it using let's say sns library sns dot count plot x equals to type right and data equals to wine this will going to give us that white wine is high red wine is low this is what it is also indicating by these numbers so that's something what we can do now uh, what another uh, important thing we generally want to understand is the distribution of these data points right so what i'll do is i will show you the distribution of fixed acidity and as well as if there is any outlier is present or not and you need to check with every column up until alcohol that way you will going to repeat the code which i am writing here right now that is a homework for you so first thing first we were going to plot two visualizations so so we will say plt plt is is nothing but this matplotlib.pyplot just to create a connection there plt dot figure we want two figures and uh, plt dot subplot one two one that means one row two column and first figure that is what it means um, after that you have sns so distribution plot this plot dist dist plot and uh, we will say uh, we want the fixed acidity right so what do we know fixed acidity so that's done um, now we will say plt dot subplot one two two and uh, here we need a box plot so we'll write a slightly different code wine come come yeah there you go fixed acidity right wine fixed acidity dot plot dot box and uh, let's make it little bit big fig size equals to 15 comma 5 so slightly bigger visualization than what it will give okay so two figures this is the first figure this is what it should plot this is the second figure plot and this is what you should plot let's execute 
and there you go. So we have this slightly right skewed distribution and a lot of outliers over here. So and some outliers even on the lower side and its average is close to somewhere 7. So it basically gives you an, an idea as to the data what you are dealing with. That way it is easy for you when you are interpreting it or you are basically putting a documentation together as to what are some of those variables which may influence a lot like in this case these outliers may influence this and maybe some treatment you may want to do after producing the first basic model right so that's something now you need to do on each variable i have shown you on the fixed acidity but do it in each variable and interpret it all right once we are done with this which is a single variable analysis on the fixed acidity i now want you to do the bivariate analysis which means it will involve two variables so for that we will going to get I will going to basically plot uh, the quality of wine against all the different variables. That means I will show you one variable and you need to do it for all the others. So for this we will say I will create a slightly bigger figure so that it is easy. It's fake size. It's the same code if you would observe. If you will write it like 10 times you will be an expert. And that's why I want you to do this homework. So plt dot figure fix size is 107 sns dot bar plot. So we'll create a bar plot where first variable x variable is nothing but quality. The y variable is nothing but let's say fixed acidity in this case. So fixed acidity and uh, we have data equals to y. Should not be warnings <laughs> wine and we execute this and it is going to produce us the quality for different types of fixed acidities so clearly um, you know wine number seven eight and nine is where um, you have the good quality and uh, the wine number nine is showing some variation with the help of this error bar so that's something you need to produce now uh, check each of the other variable first variable will be the same quality and all the other variables will be plotted against it on the y-axis to check where quality is high where quality is low it will give you a good idea about each of these variable and how the quality of the wine is attached to each variable now if you have this I will show you one very very quick way of plotting all the variables against each other and that is nothing but uh, your scatter plot and your histogram. So like uh, the one histogram which we have plotted here, this one, we are going to plot it for each variable now. So sns dot pair plot, just one simple command. And if I execute this wine, you will see a plot that is basically for each and every variable. And while it is plotting, let me take a sip of my tea. Nice tea. So yeah, that's that's the best thing. Sometimes when your code is running, uh, code is running uh, for you, you can actually take a sip of your coffee or your or your tea. Like I'm part of, I'm part of this world where, uh, you know, in India you you have this tea. But if you are sitting in, let's say, US, where coffee is more famous than enjoy your coffee while while this code is running so you can see it is doing a lot of processing out there and uh, hopefully it should give the output soon so my second sip is done let's see whether it can produce so it depends on uh, another thing like uh, a lot of different things like your laptop your internet connection and obviously how big the data is and the capacity which which on which you are running so capacity i think is not an issue all right so now you have the output as you can see how complex and big output is being produced here by just one simple command so you can see a lot of things have been gone uh, were basically working in the back end 
and you can see each variable is here in cross section with here and the scatter plot is basically showing whether there is a positive correlation or like no correlation at all so it's like a chart where you can actually spend hours writing your observations similarly if you see this one you see that different types of uh, uh, histograms that basically it has produced for you so i wanted to show you how you can do it by using just one single command okay now what we want to do next is correlation so we want to check each and every variable's correlation so with that a simple command is wine.cor so what it will do again it will produce the correlation for each and every variable and this will basically going to help you understand whether there is a negative correlation like between fixed acidity and total sulfur oxide or there is a positive correlation like this one very high uh, sulfur dioxide and total sulfur dioxide a very very high correlation but sometimes these values are very difficult to interpret uh, because you have to go one by one to each number in a state of better way is um, you know plotting it as a heat map right so again let's say we create one more figure and a big figure so fixed size equals to 15 comma 10 and we create a heat map using the sns so heat map we will say simply wine.core and c map equals to cool warm and now it will going to produce this plot so this plot is uh, is basically telling you the similar thing for example its correlation here positive correlation uh, sorry this is negative correlation and this is the positive correlation and the highest positive correlation is over here as we had experienced with the free sulfur oxide and total sulfur oxide similarly total sulfur oxide here and free so it's like the same second is this is a positive correlation this is where some positive correlation this is where some positive correlation and uh, these two blue density and alcohol and uh, here you are seeing a good strong uh, negative correlation so uh, what generally we do is uh, if there are a very highly correlated value that tends to influence the model we basically remove it so what if if you want to remove any particular one let's say for example we are seeing this one which is high 0.72 and uh, another is basically uh, the negative one which is alcohol density and yes alcohol density so you have alcohol here and density here minus 0.68 so let's say we remove anything which is uh, 72 like more than 0.7 so in that case we will basically going to write a simple drop command we want to remove the uh, total sulfur dioxide so we will say wine underscore new and wine dot drop um, what do we want to drop is the total sulfur dioxide so total sulfur dioxide we'll say axis equals to one All right, so we have this wine underscore new dot head and uh, now sulfur dioxide as you can see you have only free sulfur oxide but not the total sulfur dioxide another thing we may want to do is this converting the white and red wine into zero and one categorical variable so that it can be used there in the model so we will create an ml data set now so wine underscore ml and we will say using the pandas pd dot get dummies so get underscore dummies and here we will pass the data set name 
wine underscore new and drop underscore first is equals to true. So what it will do is basically going to convert this data set. So wine underscore ml dot had will now have everything as same, right? And uh, the type column is now changed to type white. If it is white one, otherwise if it is red, then it will be zero. And that's the reason we don't want the another variable like type underscore red because it basically shows the opposite same information. However, all of the information that you need is present here in the one column itself. All right, so once we have this, what we can, um, what we may want to do is uh, just double check whether it has any, still any um, null. So wine ml dot is null dot sum, otherwise, you know, it may give us errors. Okay, all good. So that means we don't have to really worry about that. Now the next thing will be to for this quality variable that you are seeing over here. It's something uh, uh, if let's say we decide a categorization, anything above five is good, anything above less than five is bad. Or if you go slightly higher, like anything greater than eight is good or anything greater than seven is good, below 7 is not good. So that's something we need to code. So here with the help of this command, uh, what I'm creating is basically a y variable here. So we say wine underscore ml and we have quality and we are going to use the apply function within that. We will going to use lambda for quickly converting this and we will say uh, y colon and one that means coded one if this value is greater than seven right so y is nothing but the quality quality has been moved into the y that means here interpret or read it as if quality is greater than seven then it will be one this else zero simple right so if I just go ahead and do that, print it afterwards. So you will see that Y values are now one or zero. Okay, so once we are done with this, uh, what we may probably need to do is, as you can see, the fixed acidity value is quite high when it compares, you compare it to the volatile acidity. Even the sugar value is high when you compare it with these decimal values. So we may need to standardize this data set so that these high values like this one or uh, like alcohol or like dioxide is not basically influencing the model. So the way we will going to do is, is using the standard scalar. So from sklearn, sklearn dot preprocessing, we will going to import the standard scalar. Okay. So we, after that, we will going to initialize the standard scalar. Standard, sorry, uh, we will need to create an object by uh, initializing it. Standard scalar, and after that, we fit scalar dot fit. So we need to fit the x variable over here. X is nothing but your um, this data set wine underscore ml. But wine underscore ml also has the quality variable, which is actually the y variable. So what I will do is from here, I'll, I have entered inside this cell. I will press escape and press A. This will create a cell over here. So X I will create over here. And I will just simply say that uh, um, over here is wine underscore ml dot drop and drop what quality and x is equals to one okay so this is now created you will see that quality variable is dropped because quality is actually the y variable which is already stored there so now we can fit the x variable over here and after that we say that 
um, x underscore standard equals to we need to transform now so this is a part of these steps that we need to take we need to first uh, import the library like we have done standard scalar after that we initialize the model like in this case standard scalar we need to fit the model and then we need to run the transformation so that's basically step one two three four every time you will perform the same steps okay so once you are done you will execute this and that way your values okay transform so that way your values will be transformed properly so once your values are transformed if you want to somehow see this x underscore standard let me just see whether it will show have okay because it has converted into an array but i'll just execute this you will see that every value is is basically being transformed there is a calculation which has run behind and it has completely transformed the original values into a standard values which will be uh, basically i think uh, between 1 to minus 1 if i am not wrong right so but in slight some cases it is minus 1.74 that means it's actually not the same like the fixed acidity over here and uh, sulfur dioxide but if you still want to know what's what's going on here you can always check this scalar standard scalar and this will basically help you that this is the calculation this is a z score which is being about uh, the so the standard score of sample x is being calculated like x minus mu which is nothing but the mean as you can see mu is the mean and s is the standard deviation s is the standard deviation of this training so this is a uh, this is basically a complete documentation it has as you can see some attributes which you can set so this is something far more advanced which which is basically over there but gives you a good idea as to what's what's going on here and what is the calculation because this is something it may come in your interview as well like what's go inside in the uh, in the standard scalar and here it basically standardized values by removing the mean and scaling to unit variance and the calculation is with the help of this all right so with that uh, this is what going on in the background of the uh, transformation once it is done we need to create a test and train data set so i will what i will probably do is i will just create again the x variable and keep all of the x standard value inside x so that it's easy for me to create a train test split so i will going to import the train test split by using this command that from sklearn dot model underscore selection import train underscore test underscore split once it is done i will going to write x train comma x test y train y test because this will require when we will going to run the machine learning algorithms and using the train test split x comma y so x is this y is this right we are going to write test underscore size let's say 0.2 that means 20 percent of the observation should come in the test so training will use to train the model so that model can understand um, what the different observation is and they, it can understand the properties for prediction and testing is to really test the model against the training data and if you want to repeat the exact output just say random underscore state and provide any value like two four five any value but once you will write two four five again it will produce the same output or if you are going along with me then this you and i will going to have the same output okay so this is this and uh, now we have this after that we will going to first run the very famous logistic regression so sk learn dot linear underscore model import logistic 
regression okay so we execute that and we will initialize the model like we have done in the case of standard scalar as well so log rag uh, equals to logistic regression once we initialize this we need to fit the model same way we have done here if you remember so log rag dot fit fit on training values x train y train right once you are done with this you execute it okay now the model has been fit what we were going to do is predict the value so y underscore pred predicted values predicted values will be based on this log rag model we create fitted dot predict prediction will be based on test value x underscore test so this is the test values against which it will be predicted and we will validate the output against here test data set so y underscore pred is something what we are creating now we will going to validate whether this predicted values is same as test value because what happens is x train and y train will have one one data set x test and y test will have another data set we have predicted the value based on the y test now it's like we we basically put y pred and y test side by side and check whether they are same or not right so that will give us an accuracy score so we have this metric from sklearn dot metrics we have import we have to import accuracy score so accuracy underscore score there is another one which is to produce the classification report Cla classification report and there is that one which is confusion metrics generally these are the three high level metrics what we produce there are others as well like ROC, uh, AUC score and all so something I will probably keep it for later but for a beginner I think if you understand this you can move on to the next step so maybe in my future videos I will keep on increasing the um, this this piece so that step by step one can very easily learn all right so first thing first let's have the accuracy score between the y test and y pred so first we need to provide the true value true value is nothing but the actual value test value and then the predicted value so y underscore test y underscore pred execute and 97 percent accuracy by just running a model within 30 minutes that means that's a very huge or high level accuracy and generally we don't stop here we basically have to evaluate entirely this data against a couple of models because generally what happens is some model try to overfit and we may need to basically see some realistics what is realistic is a different debatable issue but it is about which model is working best by testing multiple observation and then basically seeing where the model is not working fine and we need to be aware about those scenarios okay so we have this now we can print the classification report as well this will also take the attribute as you can see y true that means the y test and y pred y test and y score pred when it produce a big report like this one it has various different types of metrics like the precision recall f1 score and support and you can write read about that using the uh, same documentation because that's again if i start explaining and interpreting this it will be a two hour long video so something you can do it take it as a homework and read about what is precision what is recall what is f1 score and how does they decay generally a rule of thumb is in some of the metrics for example f1 score higher the f1 score that means if it is near to one the model is very good so 0 0.99 indicate that we are doing really good with our model or the the so far the processing that we have done okay so with that uh what we can do is we have this confusion metric as well so we can print the confusion metrics as well and it will also going to take the y test and y thread 
and that's basically a confusion metric again you know a different metric where you have uh four different mat metrics like true positive false positive and i think two more <laughs> so it's it's quite confusing as well sometimes uh, but but something very important where you will also find that precision recall and everything is being repeated over there so something you may want to read about it and take a note about what what each of these numbers really mean but just want to keep it a little bit out of scope don't want to make it a very very lengthy video because this is all about reading interpreting and understanding what each metric is okay and maybe what i'll do is create a separate video i think i mentioned in the previous videos as well so i'll find some time and create a video on both of these two reports so that i can refer you to those videos you can easily understand this piece okay uh once we have done that another important thing is uh which you should usually ask is the uh what are the important variables that is influencing the model and for that we have uh, models like uh, random forest or model like uh, xgboost which provide us this visibility so what i want you to do is since we have done the run the logistic regression i want you to run the decision tree right and uh, i want you to run the xgboost i will show you how you can run the random forest same way you need to run the xgboost that means two i am showing you here two you need to do at homework decision tree is homework and xgboost is homework okay so uh, i will show you the uh, random forest so sklearn dot ensemble sklearn dot ensemble we need to import the random forest classifier right and we can initialize the model random forest classifier and we fit it's the same step that's what it makes it interesting but what makes it complex is this right now we are keeping leaving this blank this is something where a lot of parameters are present and generally in real life or real projects which you will do it on a very messy data or something which is not producing good output you start tuning the parameters i will take some some of that data set and produce maybe in my one of my future video i can take that up so fit what x underscore train y underscore train right so we execute this and we say rfc underscore pred and uh, we say rfc dot predict based on test values so x underscore test now we run the same thing accuracy score let's just see the accuracy score go ahead and print the classification report and confusion metric so accuracy underscore score y underscore test y underscore pred okay 97 similar output 97061 wow is ex exactly same this is amazing right you know why because i'm using y pred not rfc pred rfc pred so i was using the output of logistic regression model that's why it was exactly same okay so be some better accuracy you can see 97.98 that means almost 98 percent so this is 97 percent accuracy with this model you got one percent more what else you need like you are 98 percent correct and if you want to uh, find the uh, feature important features then what you need to run is basically uh, rfc the model dot feature underscore importance this method will going to give you the array something you can't interpret right so what i'm going to show you a code very very important so make sure you take a note of it is how you can visualize all this so we will say pd dot series rfc dot feature underscore importance and uh, we will say index equals to uh, we had this uh, this object if you remember where we dropped the quality 
yeah wine underscore ml drop quality which was x but x is something we have transformed right so we will say here wine underscore ml wine underscore ml dot drop we will drop the quality because it has to be only those variables which have contributed into the model and we need to take the columns of it right and then we will going to plot it using the bar horizontal bar h i know I, this is a quite complex and messy code if you are watching it very first time but let's just try to see what is happening so let's start from here we are what we are doing is we are creating using the series we are basically supplying two column this feature importances which is this and then the x variable for the plot function so x and y is present and it is basically producing the bar pd dot series is making sure that we have this this basically properly arranged so that a plot function can work on this so if i go ahead and execute what will give you is an output where clearly density variable is going very high type y to something not making any sense so remove that uh, alcohol is in is contributing so first variable which is contributing high density after that alcohol after that residual sugar after that you have free sulfur dioxide so some four variables are contributing so high so you can basically then go ahead and experiment whether keeping these four variables actually makes sense or not and producing the same or the better output if it is producing same and better output there is no point where you want to keep the other variables because it will simplify the model also increase the performance okay so that's why this this output is very very important what i know what i can see now another last important part is let's say you are designing an application and you want to accept a user input right so user input will be in the form of like they need to give let's say what is the wine type is uh white or zero or you what is the fixed acidity this 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 um they will not going to provide you the total sulfur dioxide so that type of thing you know you will not going to get it so how you can basically take an input and uh and basically uh you know get the get the prediction out so what i'm going to take is do is uh, i will going to simply um i will going to simply uh you know take any observation like over here that we have for example this variable quality is six so technically the prediction should be zero right so let's say i take we do a testing pred underscore test pred underscore test is nothing but wine dot i lock which will give us the uh, second row here using the i lock method we take the second index and i will show you what it is giving you so type is white white 8.1 is fixed at it 8.1 point 0.28 point 0.28 so on and so forth so nothing but we are taking the second row let's just assume that this is what user is basically providing so what type of processing we may need to do to make sure that uh, our our system is giving you the output so once you have done this first thing first we need to convert this uh, white into one right uh, because if you remember the dummy variable so that's something a programming which needs to be done and second thing is uh, we don't need total sulfur dioxide okay so the way we were going to write that program in the back end obviously with the help of if condition that if type is white then one else red but i'm just showing you here quick way <coughs> <coughs> sorry type equals to one and over here you have uh, we need to drop pred underscore test dot drop what we need to drop is basically your uh, basically two variables we need to drop one is quality because quality is y variable and uh, total sulfur dioxide 
so i will write quality and i will write total sulfur dioxide okay so once you have this total sulfur diox sulfur dioxide sulfur dioxide and we will just have to make sure we are saying in place equals to true okay now if i show you what is the output is exactly the same what we are doing so we now have type as one right and now we don't have quality which was earlier here at total sulfur dioxide because if you remember total sulfur dioxide was having the high correlation so we removed it and quality is nothing but the y variable so six so if you remember anything above seven is one and below that is zero so ideally the output of this should be zero okay so now once we have this what we need to do is we need to transform this like the same way we have done the x variable if you remember where we run the standard scalar and uh, we just transform the data to make sure that uh, you know the high values are not influencing the lower values so uh, if i go down so remember this uh, prad underscore test okay and if i go to the place where so this is all what need to be combined i'm just showing you in bits and pieces so that you get an entire idea as to how this needs to be done so i created another cell and uh, i will say scalar dot standard scalar is already been done so i will say scalar dot fit and uh, fit what we need to basically apply we can we don't we can't basically say prad underscore test let me just show you what will happen if we say that so it will run an error and it will basically give you an indication that you need to reshape this because what we are providing is only one dimensional array right and using the reshape method minus one comma one or one comma minus one like this one what it does is along with the one dimension it basically tells the machine that whatever output you are expecting just reshape the data based on that that means automatically take the uh, do the changes that you need as per your requirements so what i need to do is i will basically have to say then so this is a sort, sort of a program you, you may need to write you will have to write when you are producing it in the front end np dot as array and uh, here we were going to say prad underscore test and using the reshape method one comma minus one is something we're going to help this now this method will going to run fine scalar dot fit prad test and we will going to transform as well prad underscore test underscore standard is scalar dot trans form and prad underscore test so once we execute this you will see that now we don't have any error and since we don't have any error now we can basically get the output we have this model already there y prad i will now say create one more this cell and we will pass on this y prad test so we say y prad test output is equals to log rag dot predict prad test std standard this is the object that we created right and give us the output so it should give us zero because the quality was six and anything below seven was zero. Prad test output. If I execute. Here we get our answer, which is zero. So this is something an application output will be coming that you need to print or you need to show it to your user once they are entering these relevant variables, right? So think like this: that they are entering all of this for white, they are entering one. Or if they are entering white, then you are converting it to a one. So up to you. How do you do that? But they are accepting all of these values from white 
till 10.1 but not the sulfur dioxide so these are the values that they are inputting and with all the processing we have done you have basically telling them hey this is not uh, the standard this is not a good quality right based on this output so after you are done after you have done you basically do the scaling of the data then you just run it the algorithm so that in the final you will going to give the output back to them this is what we are doing here manually but you can write an application based on python uh, like using django or using flask using dash so that uh, you can deploy your model and it's working in a production and quickly giving the output daily without much of an hassle and think about this uh, it's it's like uh, when machine is doing job then why would you need you know bodies actual bodies to do the job so that way you will have you will basically allow the companies to to automate this entire job uh, with the help of this program and uh, give them the give them basically uh, more um, you know savings in terms of what what they are already spending so yeah uh, that's mainly i wanted to show you uh, this complete end to end uh, project as to finally how the output will be given to them and i hope you have enjoyed this session with me let me know how did you find it and i will meet you now in the next video with a new topic